Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this lecture. This lecture is on HA architecture. So this is a theoretical lecture. Going into your exam, you're going to get an awful lot of scenario-based questions around HA design. So you need to understand it, what it is, and how to design for it. So the very first fundamental principle when thinking about HA architecture is you need to plan for failure. Everything fails, literally everything, and you should always plan for failure. And this is a real picture of one of Amazon's uh, data centers on fire. Now this data center was actually under construction, it wasn't a live one, um, but one of their data centers did catch fire. I think it was in Virginia, I can't quite remember. Um, but you know, natural disasters and things do happen, so you should always plan for failure. And Netflix actually um, sort of pioneered this. There's a great article if you go to the link down below, and I'll make sure that's in the resources section of the course um, but they created this thing called Simeon Army and this is where they would um, inject failure into their production systems so things like Chaos Monkey for example Chaos Monkey would go in and terminate production EC2 instances and they wanted to see um, how that affected their their actual platform Chaos Gorilla would go in and uh, you know basically go ahead and delete entire availability zones it would simulate an availability zone failure and so they've got all these different tools I'm not going to go through them all. Latency Monkey, for example, is where they introduce latency into the production environment, etc., etc. I would go check this URL out. It is a really, really good read. But Netflix have always um, planned for failure, and they actually will introduce failure into their production environment just to check that it does work. So what is a good example of high availability architecture? Well, let's say we've got our user, and our user is going to hellocloudgurus2019.com, and that's hosted at Route 53. Route 53 then sends them to this region. It might be EU West 1 because they're a European uh, user. And that inside EU West 1, we've got our public subnets here. We've got our private subnets here. Here's our web servers in two different public subnets. Here's our database servers in two different public subnets. We've got our NAT gateway in here. And then we've got our auto scaling group as well. And let's say that each subnet is a different availability zone. So this is availability zone 1A, 1B, et cetera, et cetera. And our databases might be doing some kind of replication. They might be doing, uh, might be a RDS multi-AZ deployment, or these could be two EC2 instances that you've set up to do a uh, synchronous replication. And then of course we have our health check. Route 53 is performing a health check on this entire region and making sure that it's up. We then have another region with an identical environment set up. And this might be in US East 1. And this is also backed by a health check. And then that way, if one of the regions goes down or perhaps it's just an availability zone, you've got fail failover. You can fail over from one region to another or you can fail over from one availability zone to another. So this is a good example um, of high, highly available architecture. So you might get some exam questions um, talking about highly available architecture. So you might have a website that requires a minimum of six instances and it must be highly available and you must also be able to tolerate the failure of one availability zone so you're always going to need six instances and you can tolerate one availability zone so what is the ideal architecture for this environment while being the most cost effective and you have to go through and have a look at it now of course straight away we know one availability zone with six instances in each AZ is going to be wrong because that's not going to be highly available if you lose that one availability zone, uh, you're going to lose the entire environment. So you're always going to have more than one AZ. So we could either start with two AZs or three AZs. Now if we had two AZs with two instances, that's going to be wrong as well because we're only going to have four instances in total and we require a minimum of six. If we have three availability zones with two instances, that will give us six. But what happens if one of those availability zones fails? We're going to go down to four and we need a minimum of six instances. So therefore, we're always going to need three availability zones with three instances to meet this requirement. We're going to need nine instances in total. That way, if we lose one AZ, we've still got six instances that will be able to look after our environment. So that was an example of a typical uh, exam question that you might see. So what are my exam tips? Just remember the following. You should always 
be designing for failure. You should use multiple AZs in multiple regions wherever you can. You should know the difference between multi-AZ and read replicas for RDS. So multi-AZ is for um, you know disaster recovery, read replicas is for performance. You should know the difference between scaling out and scaling up. So scaling out is where we use auto scaling groups and we add additional EC2 instances. Scaling up is where we increase the resources inside our EC2 instances. So we might go from a T2 micro to a you know 6x extra large or something like that. Um, so that's where you increase the amount of RAM or CPU, etc. And you should always read the questions carefully and always consider the cost element as well. So sometimes it will say, um, you know, how can you do this in the most cost effective way possible? And then there'll be one answer that's complete overkill that would be super expensive versus a much more simpler way of doing it that's cost effective. And you should always know the difference um, S3 storage classes going into your exam. So remember, just standard S3 and standard S3 in free frequently access are still highly available. The one that's not highly available is either reduced redundancy storage um, or um, S3 uh, single AZ uh, as well. So that is it for this lecture, everyone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put everything that we've learned into practice. We're going to go ahead and create a WordPress site that's highly available. We're going to be serving content out of CloudFront. We're going to be using Route 53. We're going to be using application load balancers. We're going to be using auto scaling groups. We're going to be using S3 to store some of our code. We're going to be doing an awful lot of stuff. So if you've got the time, please join me in the next lecture. Thank you.